Good day everyone, first year students of computer technology. I am Chris J. Diagdang and teaching the subject Fundamentals of Desktop Publishing. So first off is the introduction to desktop publishing. Before we start, uh, what are the things or what to expect at the end of this lesson? So you should be able to understand the concepts and how the desktop publishing works and also we should be able you should be able to define the specific terms and concepts in desktop publishing and lastly you should be able to appreciate the beauty of visual visual communication or visual application okay so here is our lesson one the visual communication and desktop publishing so first, we define what is a visual communication. So it is the conveyance and transmission of ideas and information in forms that can be seen in using symbols and imagery. So by just using symbols and imagery, you are able to define or you are able to tell what's in the picture, right? And next, we have the visual communication design and also called graphic design. I'm sure you, ha you have already heard the word graphic design. I am a graphic designer, something like that, right? So uh, graphic means visual elements associated with art, imagination, and expression involving many mediums, such as uh, drawings, uh, paintings, engraving or lettering, giving clear and explicit details. So design means to decide upon the look and function of something before it is made. And next, applications of graphic design. For example, again, advertising, branding, web design, you have your interface design, magazine layout or your cover magazines, paper engineering and packaging, television or motion graphics, infographics, signages and digital arts. So maybe we can also focus here in the infographics here because you will be creating steps like the steps on how to enroll something like that. And we also have here the image versus graphic. So ano pinagkaiba ng image at saka graphic? So image refers to the visual presentation representation of something seen in real life which can be two-dimensional or three-dimensional. So while graphic is the process by which a computer renders or displays an image. Uh, one good example of image is the one that you capture using your devices or your cameras or cell phones. While graphic, it is made using the computer. Okay, understand? And next, we also have the graphics file formats. So we have here the file format and the description. So first off is the .psd or what we call the Photoshop document. So the file format for you, for your editable Photoshop files. Like for example, if ever I will give you um, an activity and then you're not done, you're not yet done with the activity, you can simply save your output by choosing the .psd file format so that later on, you will be able to continue editing your activity. Okay, and also we have the .tif or so called tag image file format. This most of attributes of psd format is present in this format. Next, we have the .jpg or joint photographic experts group. A commonly used file format for photos and does not support transparent, transparency. I'm sure this is one of the most uh, familiar file format. Uh, if you notice know as well, JPEG or .jpg, those are the files that are on your, are on your devices. When you capture a photo, automatic uh, the file format of your picture is .jpg or .jpeg. And next, we have the GIF or Graphic Interchange Format. And this is used to display index color mode graphics. It may only contain 256 colors. 
I know you are all familiar with a GIF or GIF. Uh, these are images that are moving. If you can try to check as well on your messenger, you just have to simply check your GIF or GIF or when you are uh, going to make a story on your messenger or Facebook. Next, we have the PNG, Portable Network Graphic, a commonly used file format for photos with transparency support. Uh, this P uh, PNG, uh, you can eliminate the background. Uh, most commonly, uh, you will appreciate this when you are now going to start editing your outputs. You will know, okay? And we also have the uh, .bmp or bitmap, a commonly used file format for photos and does not support transparency. And lastly, we have the .pdf or the portable document format. And this is, a, this is very useful for displaying files across multiple platforms and applications. Like for example, if I have a Word, a Word file, and then I can save this to a PDF file so that uh, the format will not change, right? For example, as well, if you have a Word file and then magpapa print kayo so, uh, of computer shops, it is best if you save your file as that PDF so that the format will not move, okay? Next, we have the categories of graphics as well. So first is raster graphics. So these are graphics rendered in pixels. It is rendered in pixels. While vector graphics, these are graphics composed of mathematical formulas that represent the image. So as we can see it here in this example, raster versus vector. So this is actually a picture, VS and VS. As you can notice in raster, when you try to zoom in an image, you will see the pixels. Again, these are graphic rendered in pixels. So if you try to zoom in, you will see they're like squares. While in vector, it's still HD or it's still clear, right? So see the difference of raster versus vector. Now that ends the lesson one. Okay, now we move on to our lesson two, which is the elements of visual design or visual communication. And first we have the line. So a line is a continuous mark on a surface. Lines come in different weights or points. It will determine how thick it looks, curve or straight, solid or dash. And as we can see it here, in the image, this represents how thick it looks. Is it curved or straight or solid or it will be dash. Next, we have the shape or form. So a shape is made up of lines combined to create a boundary. It is the enclosed space defined by lines. So these are examples of shapes. I know you're familiar with shapes since we are we have been discussing this since we in elementary. But this is Samsung logo, or I mean Apple logo, Panda, okay. And next, we have the texture. So texture is the visual feel or illusion of a surface, which may come from the use of other elements. So texture styles, style examples are high glows, grainy, smooth weave, soft finish, paper, stone, concrete, brick, fabric, and etc. Later on in your Photoshop, you will be able to check these uh, what are the different textures of your image. Okay. And next we have the topography. So topography or text conveys the majority of information in a visual design. It is the most direct way to communicate visually. So again, instead of text, you can use images and space. And space is the area around and within objects. It is manipulated using close proximity to create relationships with the give emphasis to objects. So there are actually two kinds of spaces. So we have here the positive space and the negative space. So the positive space 
refers to the shapes of objects considered as the main focus of the composition and the negative space refers to white space or empty space within visual elements okay and that ends in lesson two and lesson three is the principles of graphic design or visual communications so layout and composition in visual design so layout and composition are the foundation of visual design it gives you the structure and guides the eye in navigating through the content these include the margins text shapes images and other elements of visual designs and the key to properly lay out compositions is to follow the principles principles of visual design first we have the contrast so contrast helps viewer differentiate one element from another so uh, the purpose of contrast is to catch the viewer's eyes so create emphasis or call the attention of something permanent so that's for contrast next we have the hierarchy this is a visual technique that can help the viewer navigate through the composition again like for example your infographics the viewer it shows the viewer where to start or where to begin and where to go next so these are just like steps so the hierarchy from first step to last step next we have the alignment this is very common in almost all compositions i'm sure you are all familiar with alignment in especially using word as well you have the left alignment center and right right and also the balance so balance is the equilibrium that results from looking at images and judging them against our ideas of physical structure so this is simply uh, the arrangement of the objects in a given design as it relates to their visual weight within a composition of course hamumet nga kayat nga nawara dijay pictures mo right and next we have the proximity as well this is about using space positive and negative spaces to show the relationship of the contents maybe there are like a lot of uh, negative spaces of your image or of your design baka do tinasayang spaces so proximity this is about using space and also repetition uh, visual composition should be consistent look and feel so such as using same color palette palette or the same header style consistency consistency makes your design easier to read or to follow through when it comes to color as well of course you should not combine something like the background is purple or violet and then the text will be black or red so you should always consider the colors as well it should be pleasing to the eyes okay and lastly of course this the simplicity this is the discipline of minimizing or refining a visual design so that the composition makes an impression the simpler the better but too much simplicity baka walang masyadong interesado sa inyong design okay next now we move on to our unit 2 which is which is the adobe photoshop area so lesson 1 the adobe photoshop user interface the photoshop photoshop is the industry standard photo editing program from adobe this section is designed to introduce you the essential knowledge you need to get started using photoshop so these instructions were created using photoshop cc for windows so this is actually the user interface of a photoshop so first off is we have the menu bar again we can see it here the file the edit image layer and so on that's your menu bar next you have your file tab as well so if ever you will have to open another image then there will be an additional file tab here so this is where your file you where you can locate your files or your canvas next these are your tools panel 
you are going to use this every time since these are the tools of your Photoshop. So one by one, they have their function. Okay. Later on, we will be discussing one by one of these tools panel. Next, we have the essentials as well. The workspace selection area. And then you have your panels. So as you can see it here in your panels, you, if you want to make an adjustment, the exposure, contrast, or colors. And as well, you can see here your layers, layers of your image background and lastly you have your open image or your canvas this is your workspace so this is where you edit your pictures by using the tools your menu bar and everything and the Photoshop okay next so how can we start or how can we create the, a new document so first is click file on the menu bar and click new. Again, in your menu bar here at the upper left, click file and then click new. And then there will be a pop-up screen here. So first is the file name. This is your file name, the Photoshop. You can edit this later on as well. And then you have your width, height, resolution. So from the width and height, it's either pixels, inches, or centimeters. It depends on you as an editor. If you are, for example, editing for a tarpaulin, tarpaulin, a graduation tarpaulin, or a birthday party tarpaulin, of course, it's better if you choose the inches so that you can determine the size of the tarpaulin. Let's say six by four, so it's six by four, and choose inches. And then click OK. And after clicking OK, this is now your new document or canvas so this is where you edit your tarpaulin or anything okay that's for your lesson one two three or unit one and unit two at the next topic you will learn how to use the tools using these tools Thank you for watching and if you have questions you are always free to ping me using my message our group page or our group message okay thank you guys